In this video, I'm going to show you a little known technique that will vastly reduce the number of errors in your VBA application. Now this technique has many benefits, it is simple to use, it is a very effective way of finding errors and if that wasn't enough, it won't impact the speed of your application. Yet almost nobody uses this technique in VBA, even though you can try it for yourself and see almost instant results. So let's get started by looking at the three types of errors in Excel VBA. If you like this video, then please click on the like button below. And if you want to get notified of my upcoming videos, then please click on the subscribe button and the bell icon beside it. Now, if you want to try out this method for yourself, then you can download the free demonstration workbook from the description below the video. And this contains some demonstrations of exactly how this method works. So you can see it for yourself in real time. The most important thing when dealing with errors in VBA is that we should understand what exactly they are. So we can classify errors into three types. We've got syntax errors, compiler errors, and runtime errors. So let's have a quick look at each so that we can understand what they are and how we should deal with them. So the syntax error is concerned with one line. It's simply an error on one line where the syntax is not proper VBA syntax. Now if we write something like dim x as long, it is a standard VBA line. If we leave out the type long, which is expected, and then return, we will get a syntax error. Now, confusingly, it says compile error, but you can ignore that. This is a syntax error. Now, another way this would happen is if we had an if statement. We could say if x is greater than zero. But in this case, we leave out the then keyword. And this gives us the error expected then or go to. So let's have a look at one more. This time, we're looking at the for loop. If we use the for loop for i equals 1 to 10, but we leave out the to keyword, it will tell us expected to. So these are syntax errors, and syntax errors are just concerned with one line. So VBA detects syntax errors by default. So we can turn this off by going to Tools, Options, and Auto Syntax Check. If we turn it off, then the line will turn red if there is a syntax error, but we won't get an error message explaining what it is. The second type of error is the compiler error. Compiler errors are concerned with more than one line of code. So here is one example. The if statement doesn't have a corresponding end if, so this would give a compiler error. And how we find compiler errors is by using debug compile in the menu. Let's select debug compile, and this gives us the message block if without end if. So if we put our end if here, and we do a debug compile again, you'll see that there's no error. So when there's no error, nothing happens. Now another example of this is if we have option explicit up at the top of our module, and we don't declare the variable. So we do a debug compile, and you can see that it says the variable not defined, and it actually highlighted x in this case. So other examples of compiler errors are a sober function being called, but it doesn't exist, incorrect parameters being passed to a sober function, select statement without an end select, for without next, and so on. You can see that the compiler is very useful for finding errors that we may not notice in our code. Doing a debug compile before we run our code helps ensure that there are no syntax or compile errors in the code. Now that we understand what a syntax and compile error is, let's have a look at what runtime errors are. Runtime errors are errors that only happen when the code is running. If we do a debug compile here, we'll find that there's no errors in this code. However, if we run the code, we'll get a type mismatch error. The reason for this is that we're trying to put text into a variable which can only store numbers. So the variable amount can only store a type of long integer. So let's have a look at a second example. In this example, we're creating a collection and adding an apple to the collection. And further down in the code, we try to access the item at position two. Now the problem is we've only got one item in the collection. So when we run this code, you'll see we get a subscript out of range error. And this means that we're trying to access an item in an array, a collection, etc but it doesn't exist. And so let's have a look at one final example. In this case, what we've done is we've declared a variable as a workbook, but we haven't actually assigned it to any workbook anywhere. And now we're trying to print out the name. And this doesn't make sense because the workbook hasn't been set to anything. When we run the code, you can see the error we get is object variable or block variable not set. So what that means in simple English is that we should set the workbook variable to something. So these are the runtime errors that produce error messages. There is a second type of error that happens at runtime, and we call this a logic error. This is when your application doesn't do what it's supposed to do. 
So for example, here we have a function that doubles a value that it is given as input. When we run the code you will see the result we get is 100 from the input of 50. Now if we accidentally change the 2 to a 4, for example, we are now getting an incorrect result. But VBA cannot help us detect the error because it has no way of knowing what we are trying to do. So this leads to two major problems. We may not discover the error for a long time, and when we discover there is an error, we may waste hours trying to find out where the problem is. So let's take a look at another runtime example. In this case we have the outline of a typical VBA application. Reading the data, updating the data, and finally writing it out. Now let's run the code and see what happens. It writes out all the numbers less than 500. Now imagine someone makes a change to this code unknown to us. We don't know that they've done it. And now we run the code, there is no results. But where is the problem? Is it in read data, update data, or write data? We have no idea and we have to debug through the code to figure out the problem. Now in this case, the code is quite simple, but in real time applications, it could be much more complex. Now, wouldn't it be nice if there was some way to detect these type of errors as soon as they occur? Well, there is, and this is where the magic of the debug assert function comes into play. So now let's take a look at the technique that we're going to use to find these hidden errors in our code. And what I'm referring to is using debug assert. Now, you might have come across debug assert before, but you probably have no idea how powerful it is. What debug assert essentially does is it takes a condition and if it evaluates to false, then debug assert pauses the code on the line as you can see here. So let's take a look at some simple examples. In this example, we're using debug assert to assert that x is less than 10. We are simply saying x less than 10 should be true. If it is true, the code will continue on as normal, but if it is false, the code will stop on this line. So if we run this code, you will see that they printed out 5 and everything was okay. But if we change x to 12, when we run the code, debug assert will stop the code on this line. And so this is the real power of debug assert. The idea is that like having a series of checkpoints all throughout your code, and it makes it very hard for variables to move through your code if they have incorrect values. Let's have a look at another example. So in this case, what we're doing is setting the month to be 12, and we have a debug assert that says the month must be between 1 and 12, which makes perfect sense. At any point our month reaches here, and it is not in the valid range, then what will happen is the code will stop. So let's run our code, and you can see that it says month is 12, so everything is fine. But imagine that an error happens in our code, and we get the wrong value for month. We could run the code without a debug assert, but we don't notice the problem, and the code gives us a value we don't know is wrong. Now we might know that we have problems in the code until it's reported by the user and this may not happen for a couple of weeks time and then we've got to dig right down into the code to find it. But using debug assert the code will tell us straight away we have a problem and it will also stop the code close to the problem. So you can see that this makes it very difficult for our code to operate if there isn't valid data in our variables. So let's take a look at the application example that we had earlier on, and I'm going to use debug assert to smoke out the errors. Remember this application that we looked at a bit earlier. It was working fine, and then for some reason, it suddenly just stops displaying any results. When an error appears, what we normally have to do is use the debugging tools and dig through the code to try and find out where the error is. So let's look at the main sub in the code. We've got read data, update data, and write data procedures and the error could be in any of them. So let's update this code by adding debug asserts to it. So now we run the code and see what happens. Straight away it stops here and says, hold on, the collection count is zero. And we can see that the line right above is where the collection was emptied. So to show how effective the assertions are, let's put this line somewhere else in the code. And let's put it in before we return the collection from read data. When we run the code now, you see it stops us right where we've put the line of code. So this means any time the collection gets accidentally emptied, we'll be notified straight away. You can see from this example that assertions save us a considerable amount of wasted time. When you're writing new code is when the errors are introduced, and often they can go undetected for a long time. So using assertions allow us to detect them very quickly. Now we see how useful assertions are, let's look at some guidelines for using them. A quick pause to tell you about the Excel VBA Handbook course. Are you struggling to build VBA applications? Do you find it difficult to get good information on how to create real-world VBA code? Is it a struggle every time you try to create a VBA application, no matter how simple it is? Well, the Excel VBA Handbook course 
teach us how to build real-world Excel VBA applications from scratch. Unlike most courses, you won't be overwhelmed with information and left to figure out how to put it all together. Instead, you'll be taken step-by-step -step through 10 Excel VBA applications with every concept explained. Once you start working through VBA applications, you'll be amazed how quickly your VBA skills increase. So check out the VBA Handbook course at theexcelvbahandbook.com and the link can also be found in the description below the video. When and how do we use Debug Assert? So in this section, I'm going to give you some very simple guidelines. The when is important. We only use Debug Assert when we are writing the code or when we are debugging it. A lot of people get confused with this and think that debugging is some part of error handling when it's actually not. When we give the code to other users, we turn off Debug Assert or we remove the statements. The last thing we want the user to see is the application pausing in the code. Now the big advantage of this is that we can add as many debug asserts as we like and it won't impact the application when we give it to the user. So now, where do we use debug asserts in our code? Well, these are the simple guidelines. Where you get a value from a sub or a function, we test this using debug assert. At the start of a sub or function, when we receive parameters, we test them using debug assert. And before you return values from a sub or a function, we also test them. Now we don't use debug assert to handle errors that should be handled by error handling code. So for example, if a cell is empty, we should have code to inform the user and prevent the application from crashing. And we call this code error handling code. However, in the early stages of creating an application where you don't have error handling code, it's perfectly fine to use debug asserts. We can always change this later. So apart from the guidelines, you can pretty much use assertions anywhere you think might be useful. If in doubt, put them in, because you can always remove them later. One word of caution for assertions is don't mix them with your code. So in this example, we have a call to a function that is in a debug assert statement. So we shouldn't do this. Our code should be completely separate from the debug assert statements. We should be able to remove all the statements and it shouldn't have any impact on how our code runs. One important point I made earlier is that we don't want debug assert to be available when the user is running our application. So what we do instead is we can either turn off debug assert or we can remove them from our code. It makes much more sense to just turn them off because we can turn them back on when we want to update the code. So how we do it is as follows. We first of all create our own sub and we do it like this. We type public sub and then we're going to give it the name debug assert, all one word. And then we take condition as the parameter and this condition is a boolean type. So that means it's either true or false. And now we're going to add the line debug assert. And that's all we're simply doing here for the moment is passing on the condition to debug assert. So let's see this working first of all. We change the code where it has debug.assert to the name of our sub, which is debug assert. And as we run the code, you can see it stops here. One thing to keep in mind is that it's always going to stop within the sub. But this is simple to get around. We do control L to view the stack and the sub we want is always the second one from the top. So we simply double click on this and this will go to the line where we're using debug assert. Now the beauty of having our own debug assert function is that we can turn it on and off very easily. So we can do something like hash if debugging equals one, then we're going to use debug assert. When we use if with hash, what it really means is that if we put code in here and debugging is not one, then the code will not be used. In other words, it won't be loaded into memory and VBA will just completely ignore it. So let's explain this with an example. Say we do x equals six. This gives us an error because x hasn't been defined. But if we move this line with the error into the hash if statement, the compiler will ignore it and we don't get an error. And similarly, if we debug through the code, VBA will simply skip over the lines here. So how do we set debugging to one? We simply go to tools, the project properties, and then we just put it in the bottom text box. We just say debugging equals one. So we can easily turn on and off the assertion by setting debugging to one. If we want to turn it off, we simply set debugging to zero or we remove it completely. So when we go back to the code and run it, you'll now see that the line stops because debugging is turned on. So now let's go and turn debugging off. When we run the code, you can see that it ignored the debug assert lines. So that's how easy it is to turn it on and off with our assertions. So let's have a recap of debug assert so we can see it in very simple terms. So what is debug assert? Debug assert is a simple statement. 
very easy to add to our code and it simply evaluates to true or false. So we can use this to easily identify the errors in our code very close to where they happen. This saves us considerable time as we're not looking through all our code and debugging trying to figure out where the error is. And we also know that when we give the code to a user, that is very unlikely that there's many errors in it. And the beauty of debug assert is that there's no impact on the speed of our application because we're removing debug asserts when we give the code to the user. So when should we use it? We use debug assert when we're writing and testing code and then we remove or turn off assertions when you give the code to the user. So what to avoid? So don't use debug assert on a line with normal code. So it should only be used on its own line where we're evaluating variables. The idea is that at any point we can just delete a debug assert and it shouldn't affect your application in any way. So where to use debug assert? So the general guidelines are when you're getting a return value from a procedure to check parameters that are going to a procedure and to check a value before you return it from a procedure. Apart from this, you can put them anywhere you think or anywhere you like, because if they don't work, you can just simply get rid of them at any point. And as I said, they don't have any impact on the code that you give to the user. So I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you could let me know in the comments if you've used debug assert before or if you plan to use it in the future, I recommend trying it in any new code that you're writing and you see how useful that it is. Now, if you like this video, please click on the like button. And if you'd like to get notified of my upcoming videos, then click on the subscribe button below. Hope to see you on the next video. Now, if you want to try out this method for yourself, then you can download the free demonstration workbook from the description below the video. And this contains some demonstrations of exactly how this method works. So you can see it for yourself in real time.